Hey guys, it's Matt, and uh, tonight I want to teach you how to install Linux and how to set it up and how to set it up in such a way that you know you can actually use it. Um, for this little lesson, I've chosen a Linux distribution called Linux Mint. It's probably one of the most friendly versions of Linux I've seen in a long time. Um, it comes in a couple of versions, a 32-bit, 64-bit, and then there's two different desktop versions. Uh, there's a version called Cinnamon, which is right here, and a version called Mate. So Cinnamon is for like a newer computer. Uh, you know, I would say like, you know, three, four years and up. Uh, Mate is for an older computer, computer with a video card that's not so hot. Uh, for this little um, lesson, I'm going to go ahead and choose Cinnamon, and I think I can only run 32-bit computers on this processor, on this virtual machine. So I'm going to go ahead and download a 32-bit version. Um, and just in case you didn't see the URL, uh, you can download Linux Mint at linuxmint.com slash download.php. So we'll choose our 32-bit version. And we need to pick a mirror, so a place to download it. So pick some place closest to you. I'm in the United States. Um, excuse me. Uh, so I'm just going to choose uh, James Madison University. And it, it's going to go ahead and download right away. No fuss, no questions, nothing. It just starts to download. So we'll go ahead and say save. It's a 928 megabyte file. So depending on where you are, that might take a long time or maybe not. It is an ISO, so we are going to have to burn it to disk to actually get it to load, um, which we will do in this tutorial. Um, this uh, this uh, tutorial or lesson is two videos long so far. This is the first video. Um, I'll probably be working on the second. Um, maybe tomorrow if I get home early? I'm not sure. So it's been like a few weeks since I've made any videos, maybe a month or something. I've been on vacation and had a lot of clients and stuff so everyone's out of the house tonight so I thought I'd go ahead and catch up so this is not looking good this is zero percent I'm hoping that it's just stalling right now or something like that but this is something you know you may run into um, I downloaded it earlier today to my laptop and um, it's pretty fast. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and find a, a suitable mirror, and I'm going to go ahead and download this thing. I'll uh, be right back. Okay, guys. Well, it took me forever to download that ISO. Um, normally, that would take just uh, like 15 minutes on my connection, but it kept stalling out pretty much everywhere in the United States so I did a Canadian mirror and I actually downloaded it from that so uh, you can see it's sitting right there turns out it's 950 megabytes in total um, you do need to burn this, this is an ISO um, in order to burn it uh, I guess I'll go ahead and give you the full instructions here you need to use something uh, something like an ISO burner called uh, well, I'll give you one for example um, uh, image burn IMG burn so if you go to filehippo.com and you look down under CD and DVD tools you can see IMG burn and I want to kind of show you how to install this because it's tricky everything is being bundled with gobs and gobs and gobs of adware these days just that's probably the most I see more than malware is just adware toolbars things like that it's unbelievable this is a little tutorial in in of its uh, self I mean to install something you have to be very slow very careful so you want to look here you know make sure we're not installing something third party you have to go really slow up oh. So right here, it's going to install the AVG toolbar. I don't want that. No thanks. Next, more crap. Drive scanner 2013. No. 
finally, after two pieces of basically adware, we get the program installed. And I get it, these guys gotta make money and stuff, but I mean, woof, the adware and the toolbars are getting incredibly crazy right now. I mean, it's what I deal with mostly these days. I would say in the past three months. Tons of adware. It's just unbelievable. Alright, so I have uh, Image Burn installed on my uh, desktop here. And then I also have, under my downloads, the Linux Mint uh, ISO. In order for me to actually boot my computer up to this Linux disk and install Linux to a computer, I need to right-click this. Well, for example, I'll right-click it. And I'll say Open With Image Burn. So I have a blank DVD in my burner right now. Um, I'll go ahead and burn it and I'll also verify the disk just so we know it's actually okay. And we'll hit burn. So I mean in order to install this you do have to have our you know Linux Mint CD already created or you're going to have to download it on a computer that you already have and um, you know pretty much plan on if it's your only computer and you really want Linux Mint, then you'll have to go ahead and, you know, format that computer with Linux Mint. Or you can do a dual boot thing, but I'm not covering that right now. We're just assuming we have, you know, a spare computer sitting around the house that we want to play uh, with uh, Linux on. Or we're just tired of Windows uh, and we just want to, um, you know, put Linux on there. Now, a lot of people always comment in my videos, you know, the, the best way to get rid of a virus is to use Linux. Well, well this is what you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and use Linux, and yeah, I'd say that 99% uh, of the Internet is now uh, malware-free for you. There are some Linux viruses out there, but I, I don't know. They're few, 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 and far between. So... Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and just pause it and let this uh, verify, and we'll be right back. Okay, guys, well, I've uh, popped my CD into my computer, and I'm uh, booting up to it right now. So this is a bootable disk. And, um, yeah, so just put it in your um, computer. Make sure your computer is set to boot from disk. Some people have asked for a tutorial on how to do that, you know, how to change your BIOS and, you know, make it boot from, you know, like a USB stick or disk or whatever. So, um, yeah, I think that's probably necessary and I'll probably do that. Uh, it'd be like really, really quick. So this is how Linux Mint starts. This is what it looks like. We haven't um, gone through the installer part yet. It's just kind of loading. So it does take uh, you know a few minutes to uh, load up. I'm used to loading it off an ISO, and it's like so fast. You don't you know it just blinks blinks at you. So, but when you're actually loading it from a DVD, it's uh, taking some time here. So I guess while that's loading, I can go over some of what I'm going to be doing in this first video. Right now we are getting to the point to where we are actually installing Linux Mint. Um, once we install it, we're going to learn how to update it. We're going to le learn how to download um, a program like Google Chrome. Uh, and we'll, s we'll learn how to uh, add shortcuts to like your um, toolbar and your desktop. And then video two is uh, a little more complicated. Uh, a lot of stuff there. And then possibly video three and maybe more, I'm not sure. So we'll see. See how much demand there is for uh, people that want to know how to use Linux. 
some people have asked if I use Linux at work. Very rarely. Um, we do have a Linux server, and then I manage like 32 Windows servers. So my life is mostly Windows and OS X. Okay. So it looks like uh, at this point we have Linux Mint installed, but it's not. This is like a, a live CD, a bootable version of Linux Mint. Um, you could actually navigate a file system on this computer if there was one, but there isn't. Um, you can see it's just got all this stuff right here, and there's really no file system on here. So you could kind of think of this as almost a rescue disk, but not really. So what you want to do at this point is install Linux Mint. So double click that. It's a little deceiving, but it gives you the opportunity to say, you know, hey, I don't really I don't really like the way this looks or yeah, it looks awesome. I want to go ahead and, you know, start using it. It's a fully functional sorta Linux OS, but you know, what you really want to do is go ahead and double click on that install Linux Mint. So we'll go ahead and say continue. Choose your language. Uh, make sure you have at least six gigabytes available and you're connected to the internet. And if you're on a laptop, it's going to say make sure it has a power source. So you have a few options here. We're just going to choose the default one, but they do explain them quite well. And it's very good at detecting what time zone you're in. So I'm in Chicago time zone. I'm in St. Louis actually, but in the Chicago time zone. And we're choosing our keyboard layout. So it says, who are you? My name is going to be Matt. Let me click in here. Okay. I was like, oh no, I can't type. What? Matt. So we'll call this Matt Mint. Username is Matt. I'll pick a password. So there we go. Um, require my password to log in. So go ahead and say continue. We're just choosing very basic options here. And voila, it's installing. So, so now you just sit here and wait for a little while. I don't really know how long it takes because I normally do this, you know, on. Um, a computer that's mounted this disk as an ISO and not a disk. So, um, yeah, it could take a while. Okay, guys, well, uh, Linux Mint has been installed, and you can see that the resolution doesn't actually fit my screen. This is something that you might run into, uh, it depends on your video card and whatnot. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and it says username, we'll type in uh, Matt, and we'll do my password. Now it's creating my uh, home directory right now, <clears throat> that can take a few moments. And the home directory is just like basically where you save your documents and settings and things like that. So this uh, resolution issue right here, you can fix that easily. You just have to get the right uh, graphics drivers installed, and I'll go over that in a later later uh, video. So uh, first things first, let's check and see if we have internet access. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and click Firefox down here in the uh, taskbar. And yeah, we do. LinuxMint.com. So, booyah, right there. So, well, let's go over to our menu. And if you click Start, it looks pretty familiar. I mean, it's nothing crazy. Let's go down to, um, let's see, System Tools. No, I know there's a spot to update. It was, uh, <clears throat> let's go to Update Manager. There we go, Update Manager. And uh, with Linux Mint, you're going to constantly uh, be prompted for your password. Uh, when you want to do something uh, administrative. So, so it's going to automatically uh, detect uh, what updates you need based on your installation. So it's scanning our installation right now, and it'll give us all the updates for what we have. So you can see them all right there. If you want to click on them, you can read what they do. So anyway, I'll just go ahead and say install updates. It's going to go ahead and install all those updates. So besides updating stuff, um, it will also say, hey, I need to install something new. So it's going to go ahead and do that as well. And then this process can take, I don't know, 15 minutes, something like that.